Hey there investors, this is Tyler from Augury Research. In this video, we are going to discuss allocation that this is probably, you know, this is the most important lesson. Uh, but before we begin, a couple of things. First off, uh, if you guys don't know, I'm running a free 30 day email course. I'm going to put the link below in the description. I highly recommend that you go subscribe to that list, go back and read the previous lessons because this lesson on allocation is maybe lesson number six and really tying together what we've learned in the previous lessons. Uh, and this is a the most important lesson. So you're going to want to watch this video entirely, but then go back and you know catch up on the other stuff. Uh, I would say you probably don't need to read that stuff first, um, but it will help you understand a little bit more of the maybe advanced topics that I am discussing. Um, Capital allocation is the most important thing as an investor. Uh, I, I'm in love with the game of investing and it's all about allocation is the game, right? Um, so I'm actually gonna implement a rule here. It's the, the one cup, everybody knows the rules, right? Rip off Portnoy's uh, pizza reviews. One cup, everybody knows the rules. I could probably talk about this forever. Um, and I don't want to keep everyone forever. This is a subject that gets pretty deep and really, really deserves a lot of, um, you know, thinking about. But uh, I'm going to give you guys a little bit of a backstory as to how I've gotten to where I am, um, some of the things that I've learned through my investing career, and um, hopefully through these stories, you'll be able to get an idea as to uh, maybe the game that I'm playing, but how to play your game better, right? So this is kind of like a, it's almost like a pitching lesson. You, Everyone's got to, you know, throw the ball for themselves. But maybe if I tell you, you know, a couple different grips on my pitches and, uh, you know, how I'm thinking about getting batters out, you know, it'll be beneficial to you. So I want to try to do these videos in that um, with that in mind that everyone is going to be their own player and uh, you know some of these ideas that I share uh, are extremely valuable and they will make you a lot of money if you you know use them the right way so a little bit of backstory I started investing in 2010 bought Berkshire and Markel group they did great those were two you know in the grand scheme of things I, I was going I bet all in uh, and I bet on these two stocks, two pretty good companies to bet all in on. Uh, if that, uh, you should never really bet that much. Uh, but if you're going to do it a lot better doing, a, uh, excuse me, those businesses than some of the other stuff that's out there like Tesla shouldn't be all in on Tesla. Anyway. Uh, so, uh, I did that for a few years, did good. Um, then I hopped into this kind of like a can slim investing system. I actually got the book right here. Oops. So this guy wrote this book, some, some investing system it doesn't work. I, and I don't, I don't necessarily recommend the, the system, but this book has some interesting things to think about. I liked it. Uh, I actually tried it and it worked. I had one stock that worked great. I had this company NetEase and so what I did is I went out and I found six stocks that fit this system, the system lacks of margin of safety uh, idea. And it's just not, it doesn't work. The system doesn't work. But uh, I got the six, these six stocks and I, you know, picked six and then I allocated the same amount of money to them. Well, this is a great mistake. And I, and I really should have, you know, I had no common sense back then. Uh, you know, it doesn't take a genius to figure out, you know, your best opportunity deserves your most amount of money. And I had these six stocks, three of them I didn't really like and I didn't really understand, but they fit the system and I wanted to see if the system worked, so I did it. There was one company that I loved, it was NetEase, and basically it's a World of Warcraft for China. And you know, I said, I see how well this is working, my friends are playing it, you know, people get addicted to the game, that's gonna work over in China. This business is gonna you know, rock and roll for a while, uh, but I—it's so silly of me. I put you know a thousand dollars in this, and I put also a thousand dollars in the five other businesses. You know, if I could had any common sense, it would have been like, 
let's put four thousand dollars in this, and then you know, two thousand dollars amongst the five others. But uh, I didn't do that, and you know, shame on me. That was a mistake. You, I'll save you guys years and years. Don't do that. You know, you want to get your the most amount of money and your best ideas. What a novel idea. Uh, and that's actually why you know one of the benefits of the journal is you get all your you know you'll know all of your businesses because you're gonna be journaling them go through the checklist you actually are grading them this is a grading system uh, and then you'll you know be able to say okay well this has got a 93 percent confidence this has a 73 percent confidence and so forth uh, and you'll be able to you know compare your ideas similar to what I do now is Okay, I'm in the dilemma. My portfolio is in a dilemma. It's a good dilemma because I have a good portfolio, but uh, I got three stocks, right? <clears throat> right, here's stock one. Here's idea two and idea three. So this is a stock I'm actually in already. Okay, I, I, I undervalued security. Like the opportunity but is it better than this one here in the middle? Well, this is a business that's trading at $60 million. And I think it's, you know, this is an interesting setup where I got a $60 million business that I'm paying. Uh, you know, I think there's a X percentage chance that it's worth 150. I think there's an X percentage chance that it's worth 100 million. I think there's an X percentage chance that it's worth 30 million. And this is the game of capital allocation where once I assign these probabilities, right, I now can determine the value of this and, you know, see if it is better than this company. This is a company that's trading at $120 million. That's worth, you know, $300 million. And the level of certainty is relatively high. So this one has by far the most value. Enough value for me to say, you are out of the portfolio and you are in the portfolio. And this is how you should be running your portfolio, right? And I have, I have, I have hundreds and hundreds of businesses. But, uh, I mean, if I go through some of these, right, every idea has value. And the, the goal is to make your money work for you. You don't want it working, you know, you don't want lazy, uh, bad, stupid employees working for you. You want, like, the best of the best. You know, if, if it all comes at the, you know, they come at different prices, but the great thing about investing is they, you know, the game is equal. Uh, this business, I can get in in this, I can get in this, and I can get in this at the same, it's like just as easy. I mean, this might be a little bit easier, but I could get my money into any of these businesses. That's the, the beauty of the stock market. Doesn't matter how much money you got, right? I mean, once you get into the big dollars, it's pretty difficult. But, you know, I could go buy $10,000 of this business tomorrow. And then I can buy $10,000 more the next day. I can buy $10,000 more the next day. I mean, this is amazing. And, um, you know, you go sit at the poker table and you can't do that. Uh, you go sit anywhere in the world. You can't play with this kind of money and get in and out of things like so easy. That's why the stock market is the greatest game in the world. Uh, you know, okay, so... Just for some perspective, I could get in and out of hundred thousand dollars easy with this stock uh, in this security. I could not get in and out of a hundred thousand dollars in this one, right? This is something that is more illiquid, uh, would be just more difficult. This one is surprisingly even such a good opportunity. I could get in much as I want, right? This is rare. This is why it's a good idea. It goes in the very good idea pile. Um, you know, this is only an okay idea because I can only get so much cash into it. Um, this is, you know, okay. I could get as much as I want, but the value isn't there, right? So this is major difference in edge between these uh, style of bets. So like, if you're someone that manages $10 million, you know, and you need help doing this, obviously you would have to call me, but you know, it's important. Right, because if you have one thousand dollars in your portfolio, you need to be winning. 
You need to be winning with small amounts of money because the game is way easier with small amounts of money. If you can't win with $1,000, you ain't winning with $100,000. The game becomes more difficult. So a lot of people like, oh yeah, I got $1,000 now. Uh, you know, if I had $100,000, I'd do better. Nah, buddy. Okay, that's not how it works. Um, the game becomes more difficult the more money you got. If I got $100 million... Okay, if I had a hundred million dollars, this is still on the table. This is not even in the table, out of the table. This is in the table. You know, I could play these hands. I could play this hand with a hundred million dollar portfolio. This is off, this is out, this is out, this is out. Uh, this one's in actually, you could probably get in that one. Out, so just like that, my, my watch list is out half. The game gets more difficult with more money. Not easier. Don't let anyone fool you. Uh, so, back in the day, I got these six stocks. I knew net, net ease was the best out of them. But I didn't have the awareness to, you know, size my bets the right way. And when you're actually, when you're sizing your bets the right way, you're minimizing your portfolio risk. Diversification is such a joke. And this is kind of how I got started. You know, when I first told someone I'm investing, the first thing they said, well, make sure you diversify. And, you know, what bad advice that was. I should have been going all in on some of these ideas that I've seen over the years. Um, thankfully, I'm only 27 and I'm going to have plenty of time to hit good ideas. Uh, but, uh, you know, you don't understand how much money is in this game and how, how time plays with the money. Uh, it's, it's quite incredible. But uh, basically, you know, I, I diversified amongst these six ideas and I should have bet big on one and then, you know, mediocre on the, bet, on the rest. Uh, well, in fact, I should have not even put three of these ideas in there because they weren't worth it. But uh, it taught me a lot about the downside. And then I got really into the Ben Graham thing and, and how to value the businesses and, you know, what your risk is. Because if you're playing a risk to reward game, the reward aspect is important. Don't get me wrong, it's very important. And there's some low probability ideas that you can hit um, because there is so much reward potential. Now, you know, the risk, the risk is what really every investor should measure. And that's why the number one strategy in my journal is the net net strategy, because it's a very low risk strategy. Uh, and if you, you know, play it right, you can make good money using this this idea of the net net um, from from Graham and that's kind of where I'm at now in my investing is you know I only give a shit if something has a margin of safety if it doesn't and I, I'm not really playing the right game unless it has tons of value on the upside and those are they're pretty rare to find but uh so past that I'm working installing water heaters and I'm kind of like realizing if this is not what I want to do the rest of my life, well, I need to start hitting some bets in the stock market. So I uh, did a ton of research on this fraud and put together this semi-complex uh, option strategy. And I go, basically, I'm sweating my ass off installing water heaters. And I'm like, this isn't for me. You know, how do I get to the next level? Well, I can't continue to you know make small bets and you know in the stock market i might as well find something i like a lot and bet big on it uh you know that was such a good idea at the time and i uh found something i put the, the whole trade together i almost got like i was getting like three to almost three to one odds it was like two and a half or something to one and i I'm, what i felt was a really likely uh you know, scenario to play out where I would get this money in a pretty short amount of time, well, under a year. Uh, so I bet big. I bet 30% of my portfolio, which is about right. Um, and this, it might have been over betting a smidge, but um, was really a good bet by me. And like I said, I used an option strategy to short a fraud. Uh, and man, Oh my God. It was like the biggest headache in the world. It was so tough. I, uh, you know, I had 30% of my money in this idea and I had a little bit of money because 
I had been betting big on some of these other stuff. Like I had a big bet on dries, short, uh, all of these ideas. Like I, I had hit some good bets before, but this was the biggest one that was like, I'm holding this for an extended period of time. And I, I really did a good job of outlining the risk involved in the trade and the reward. And I did a phenom I did everything right. But even when you prepare like that, you learn, I learned the hard way about the emotional risk involved in investing. So basically I put together this magnificent plan of action on this fraud that was trading at like $2.5 billion, had a catalyst, you know, had everything in place to this, for this to be a great bet. And I bet big. And you know, since I was using options to leverage my position, I, I got the options rule book and read something in the rule book where it was like, okay, if, you know, because I'm like, how am I, what, can I lose my money? And yeah, there was a scenario where I could lose my entire bet, which is 30% of my portfolio. A lot of water heaters, let's say. And uh, I uh, put together the bet. And in the rule book, I read, if the stock gets halted and the halt lasts past your expiration date, you get screwed. The options expire worthless. I knew the scenario was possible. I said, that's probably unlikely, but I did. I've seen stocks get halted for like six, seven, eight. I've seen a stock. There was a stock that got halted for like three years. One time I was watching it. Uh, I almost shorted the thing. And what happened was I was thinking about shorting this stock and the borrow rate is insane. And uh, stock gets SEC halted. Doesn't reopen for months and months and months. So all these short sellers, if you're stuck short, you're paying the borrow rate. It's insane. So you got to like call your broker up. They got to match your shares. It's a whole mess. That's why I'm always pretty careful about, um, you know, getting stuck in something like that. And basically with uh, this particular stock, I could have exercised some of my, my options, but then you run the risk of getting stuck into this insane borrow rate and the stock stays halted for an extended period of time. And I was not about that game either. So, I mean, I really considered a lot before making this trade and I still pulled the trigger. Um, I probably maybe have discounted the risk a little bit, uh, the likelihood of the risk. Eh, maybe not, it's hard to say, but you live and you learn. And uh, basically stock gets halted, of course. Thing halts for like a month. So, and I got 30% of my portfolio tied up in this thing and you know every day i'm going out i'm you know installing the water heaters and i'm you know sitting there at work and i'm like if i lose all my money i'm sweating my ass off i'm like if i lose all of my money like this is literally uh you know i'm playing with enough money where it's like this is months of work dude this is like a, a long there's a lot of water heaters that i'm risking on this bet so like every night i'm like going nuts trying to sleep and can't think about it don't think my money is going to come out of this, you know, successfully. You learn all, you, you want to learn about emotions and investing? Have a 30% of your portfolio. I'm not talking about a 30% of your portfolio at longer stock. That's way different than 30% short of fraud. Uh, and, you know, get stuck in that for a month. Have your money froze and, you know, just sit in there and you're helpless. It's a, was not a fun experience, taught me a lot. And that's when I came up with, um, I, I, this was not yet, but so I get out of the thing. I double my money. This is the same time. This is why my bet on tandem was so tiny is because I was stuck in this stupid fraud. Uh, but, uh, same about the same time I'm in tandem and I'm saying, you know, if I lose this money, you know, how much money can I bet on tandem? But, uh, that was the thing. It's like, I had been investing for a while now at this point in my career and I didn't have like a great allocation strategy. Uh, and I, and I was, it bothered me a lot because I, I thought I had misplayed Elfin and you know, when I'm going through all this, I'm like asking everybody I know that's like a sophisticated investor, how do I allocate capital 
you know, without getting hurt, you know, what's the, what's the process look like? And nobody had a good answer. And it drove me nuts. I, I hated it. I, it's like, you know, almost in my mind that everybody I had talked to about investing, and I had talked to all kinds of people, but it's almost like they're a charlatan. Like, they don't know. They don't have the answer. You've been investing for 20 years. You don't have the answer to this. That bothered me a lot. So I started studying it. And what I did is I actually what was the most help was I went to, you know, poker. Poker is literally a game of bankroll management. It's amazing. And there are like some, uh, you know, constraints as to how the game operates. It's not completely, uh, it's not completely unregulated, but these little, like the, the littlest drop of regulation changes the game, the aspects of the game, the dynamics of the game quite a bit. But uh, poker really is a great game of bankroll management. If you want to learn allocation, you go play poker. Um, you know, come If you're ever in Ocean Ridge, come play with me. I'll play. I love to play. Um, I'm still learning the game, but I would love to practice more and more and more. So uh, I went. I pulled up the World Series of Poker Championships, and I read through. They got these transcripts. You can actually see how the cards are being dealt, and you know how they're playing, how they're betting. And I would follow the people that are most in tune with the game, right? And part of being a good investor is being in tune with reality. Part of being you know good in poker is you know being in tune with the game. And uh, I would read these hands, and I would you know see how much they're betting compared to their bankroll, and you know what value they're holding when the cards flop, and you learn so much. It's a it's an amazing amazing game. And if you actually want to learn about capital allocation, I highly recommend doing that. That's how I actually came up with you know my system. So this is my system. Now. You got to remember, this is going to be different for everyone. How I mentioned before, and I, I pushed my risk, risk tolerance at like 30%. I started to run into maybe a little bit of emotional risk where at this point, I mean, I'd rather value my sleep than, you know, make a couple extra bucks. I want to be comfortable in my portfolio. And it goes even further. If you have a li even a drop of doubt in an idea, uh, even a drop of doubt an idea you should you know cut it because that doubt will maximize um when you have a leverage position and you know i play this game as a concentrated investor the more you know the less you diversify the better the value the less you diversify um if you really want to build wealth and like big big wealth not just like you know market perform stuff uh so this is my allocation strategy and it's based off of the risk that I experienced in that uh, option short position. So basically it starts off with an A++ bet. An A++ opportunity deserves my biggest bet and that's 36%. Uh, generally I'm not going to find anything where I'm going to be betting more than 36%. Possibly. Um, but that's basically, you know, about what I think I can withstand. So that's an A++. Uh, an A is 18%. So that's also a good. And then obviously we have A at 18 and then A++ at 36. You know, maybe A is somewhere in the middle. Or an A++ is somewhere in the middle of 18 and 36. And we have B+, 12%. Uh, B, 6%. C, plus 3%. C one and a half percent. These are like your more a one and a half percent position is really not going to hurt you. It's just like if you're right, you get a little taste of the fun. If you're wrong, you know it's just like nothing. Uh, C plus is a half position. You're like trying to learn something new, maybe. Uh, and B is just like an average position. Okay, I got an average idea. So like this is a B this is a B this is an average idea this might a little bit better than a B but you know position and a half let's call it and that's the thing a six percent position is my baseline position so this is my bet I'm just like good to play one hand uh, a double bet and then we had triple bet and I that's how I like running my portfolio uh, and I like to you know allocate in this fashion 
And now, if you haven't visited the previous lessons, you're not going to really understand that. And this is the graphic, right? I call it the auger allocation. But this is going to be based on what you can handle emotionally, not what I can handle emotionally. So you might find better odds that it'll kind of fit your criteria and might come up with a once in a lifetime opportunity and you don't want to maybe just bet 36 if you can handle betting half of your net worth into something. Uh, I just mentally, you know, it bothered me betting that large uh, and carrying that much risk of permanent loss of capital. So it's all up to you. And, you know, every investor is going to be different. And, you know, they're, they're very much so could be part you know, like given skill, God given skill, right? Like some guys are six six and throw a hundred miles an hour. Some guys are five eight and throw eighty miles an hour. So uh, there might be some limitations to how far you can go in this game, and that might be my limitation. Uh, you know, not being able to bet more than thirty six percent might hold me back greatly in my career. But even if I don't figure that all out, I th I'm going to do plenty fine betting the way I am. And playing the way I am, uh, I should be able to get enough money <clears throat> to please me in life. Uh, if you're more aggressive, then you know you can push the, push the envelope all you want. But, uh... Uh-oh. But, um... So basically, that's the gist on capital allocation. I know it was kind of a lot and we kept the video under 30 minutes. And uh, the main takeaways are get the most money into your best ideas. Build, build this betting system for yourself. Grade every opportunity, grade them, research them, place a probability on these bets. Very, very important. And, you know, take the previous lessons. You got to value the business. You got to value the, uh, you know, the bet that you're making and then allocating the right amount of money to that bet is extremely important. And that will truly be uh, the determinant factor, whether you, you know, get rich in the stock market or not. So I hope this video was um, useful. I hope that, you know, all of the lessons are useful. And if you need to go back, make sure you click the link in the description read those lessons, watch some of them videos, uh, learn this stuff, you know, get a journal and start playing. You know, it's very, very important if you guys are going to be out here, you know, trying to manage your Robinhood accounts and stuff like that. Even if you're managing larger money, like I said earlier in the video, a hundred thousand dollars is a lot harder than a thousand dollars. If you ain't doing good on a thousand dollars, you're not going to do good on a hundred thousand dollars. And you're probably going to have a lot worse, uh, you know, a lot less fun playing the game. So not a bad idea to start small, get as you prove that you can perform, then get big money. Um, and uh, yeah, basically that's the gist. I hope this video was useful. Make sure you guys like the video, subscribe to the video. If you want to learn more about investing, head over to Augury. If you want to get our newsletter, which are basically these ideas, uh, delivered to your email or, you know, read up on our website, check out our website, join, you know, become part of the discord group. And, uh, yeah, that's it. Like subscribe and I'll catch you guys in the next video. Peace.